All right, tensions are escalating in West Asia. According to reports, suspected Israeli warplanes have bombed Iran's embassy in Syria. Now, Iran says the bombing killed seven of its military advisors, including three of its senior commanders. And the bombing marks a major escalation in a war pitting Israel against its regional adversaries. According to Iranian state media, one of those killed was Mohammad Reza Zahidi, a senior commander of Iran's Revolutionary Guards Corps. Tehran believes he was the target of the attack. We told you before, Zionist entity knows very well that such crimes and any kind of crimes will not remain without response. Iran says their response to the attack will be decisive. Moreover, Tehran is not alone in issuing a warning to Israel. Lebanon's Iran-backed Hezbollah group also warned Israel that they will pay the price for killing high-level Iranian Revolutionary Guards commander. In Damascus, the militant group says that the crime will not pass without the enemy receiving punishment and revenge. On the other hand, hours after the strikes in Damascus, Israel Defense Forces spokesperson accused Iran of orchestrating a drone attack on Israel's naval base in El Al. Tonight, an unmanned aerial vehicle made and directed by Iran hit a naval base in Eilat. This is a very serious incident. Minor damage was caused to the facility and there were no casualties in the incident. We are investigating it in order to draw lessons and improve our defense capabilities in the area and its surroundings. The Islamic resistance in Iraq, an Iran-backed group of militias said in a statement that it had attacked a vital objective in Israel using appropriate weapons. It did not offer further details. While Israel's closest ally, the United States of America, has said that they are looking into reports about the strikes in Syria. The White House says President Joe Biden is aware of reports of Israeli airstrikes in Damascus. So, look, I'm aware of the reports. Our team is looking into it, so I'm not going to get ahead of, of anything just yet. But obviously, we're aware of the reports, and our team is looking into it. I'm just not going to. In Iran, protesters burned Israeli and American flags as they gathered in Tehran to condemn the attack on the Iranian embassy. It's considered part of a country's territory. There should definitely be a firm response to this action. For us to sit quietly is not the right thing to do at all because it would dare to target more positions, more assets and people of Iran and may tell itself why not Tehran next time and fitting revenge must be taken. All right, for more on this, we're now being joined by John Erath. Senior Policy Director for the Center for Arms Control and Non-Proliferation. He is joining us from Washington, D.C. Sir, thank you so much for joining us on World DNA. Thank you very much. Now, uh, sir, to begin with, Israel, it's not officially commented, but there are reports quoting sources which do say that some top IDF officers have in fact said that it was an Israeli strike. Do you reckon this marks a major escalation in the war between Israel and its regional adversaries? Unfortunately, this is not the first time that there have been attacks going back and forth between Israel and Iran. Uh, Israel has taken out Iranian commanders and uh, nuclear scientists in the past, and Iran has responded with terror attacks against Israeli interests. So unfortunately, this is yet another chapter in a very long and tragic story. There are, however, two things about this that do quite bother me. Uh, the first is it appears to have been a deliberate targeting of a diplomatic facility, mm -hmm. uh, the uh, Iranian consulate in Syria. Uh, diplomats are there to promote peace and dialogue, and if they become targets of aggression, they can't do their job and hopes of peace are that much less. Uh, the second is that apparently the cover of the diplomatic facility was being used for military purposes by Iran, uh, which is part of the same problem. If it is not being used as a diplomatic facility, uh, then that's an abuse of the diplomatic privilege. Hmm. Mr. I also wanted to get your thoughts on this. And now we have seen strikes between Israel and Iran. Iran obviously responds with its proxies in the region. Israel has been going out against its military installations. This time they've also targeted the embassy there. How do you feel Iran is going to respond to this? They've already mentioned that they are going to ha take a decisive response. How do you see this one coming back from Iran's side? This is uh, fairly normal rhetoric from the Iranian side. 
Uh, I expect that there will be further terror incidents. Uh, I expect that Iran would use proxies the way it has before, uh, particularly Hezbollah and Hamas, uh, to uh, conduct some attacks against Israeli interests. Uh, I don't uh, have any special insight as to where and when this might happen, but I would not be surprised if it does. All right, sir. Of course, just for more clarity on this, you've of course touched on this already. Most Iranian proxies in the region are already involved. How far do you see this conflict expanding going from here? You say that this is just another chapter. How many more of these are we going to see? If I knew that question, I'd be in line for a Nobel Prize. <laughs> uh, the the uh, story is very long and very tragic, and I don't think we're nearly at an end to it. Right. Uh, it's also difficult to see how much more it can expand and how much worse it can get. Uh, I greatly fear there are going to be more lives lost and more tragedy in the region before we see any improvement. All right. Well, Mr. John Arrell, thank you so much for joining us on World DNA with your insights on this. Always a pleasure to have you. Thank you very much for inviting me.